Hello, Senator. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing? You were just in Poland and Germany, right. right? What are your takeaways from being in the region? I can sum it up in one sentence. The Europeans are united and the Ukrainians are determined. The U.S. has, through various means, made clear that they are very concerned about what Putin may be capable of doing now that Plan A didn't work out. How, where do you see this moment ranking in world history? It's the most dangerous moment we've been in since the Cuban Missile Crisis. I think Vladimir Putin today is the most dangerous person in world history because he's dictatorial, he appears to be emotional, he's bloodthirsty, and he has nuclear weapons. That's the thing that makes it so extraordinarily dangerous. The, the question is whether Putin will take a, an off-ramp or whether he's just going to double down. One of my favorite sayings is, if somebody shows you who they are, believe them. And his history in Grozny, in Chechnya, is bomb the crap out of them. You have an interesting theory about Russia escalating to de-escalate. Can you explain that? They think of nuclear weapons as just another weapon. We think of nuclear weapons as a, as a last resort qualitatively. In fact, the, per, the reason we have nuclear weapons is to deter other people from using them. Escalate to de-escalate under the Russian formulation, the doctrine is if we're losing on the battlefield, we'll use a tactical nuclear weapon to reset the situation. If they define it as a threat to the homeland, and if they define Ukraine as part of the homeland, then that means this theory could apply. That's the nightmare scenario. NATO announced that they're going to double troops along the eastern flank. Do you think that that's the right move to further deter Putin, further push him to a diplomatic situation? I think they have to strengthen those countries. On the other hand, it's a delicate operation because one person's deterrence could be another person's provocation.